Hello, my name is John Switzer, and I would like to welcome you back to Black Bear Forge. The project I have in mind today is a simple ornamental project. It's something you might give as a gift or sell at a craft fair or something like that. Fairly simple elements. The only real difficulty is, is that we're going to do a little bit of forge welding. We're going to make three leaves, and we're going to forge weld those into one group. Then we're going to forge weld that group onto the end of a bar. Now, you don't really have to forge weld. A lot of people would go ahead and MIG weld this, TIG weld it, something like that. But I strongly encourage you to learn to forge weld. It is a basic technique, and learning to forge weld opens a whole lot of doors. So let's get with it. Let's start by making three very simple leaves. I'm working in the coal forge today. This can certainly be done in a gas forge, but the coal forge can take little shorter heats and be a little bit more precise. And that makes life a little bit easier. You don't end up with long floppy bars all at welding heat. And you can just get the heat right where you need it. Plus, you guys said you wanted to see more of the coal forge. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm starting with 3 8 or 10 millimeter square bar. And we're going to start just by forging a simple point on the end. I'm not worried about keeping it centered. There'll be so much work to do later that it doesn't have to be centered. So that's all I need at this point, or at this moment, maybe I should say. Next thing we'll do is we'll offset for the stem, and I'll leave about an inch of square bar in there. Now we have looked at making all sorts of leaves here at Black Bear Forge. So if you're interested in some other approaches to making leaves, a little bit more detail in the way I approach some of these leaves, I'll put some links up here throughout this video so you should be able to find some other form of leaf and some other videos on leaves. But wait till the end of this video before you switch over. We'll just offset that off the edge of the anvil. Turn it 90 degrees back and forth. I'm not worried again about centering this. It'll kind of all take care of itself in the end anyways. I want to draw out part of the stem and do most of the thinning of the stem at this stage. And how much you want to do is just kind of up to you. I'm going to go about two or three inches. Just make all three leaves essentially alike. Go ahead and round that up. Just a little for now. Okay, there will probably be some more work to be done with this before I cut the leaf off here. But yeah, it looks better. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and spread that leaf and I'll, I'll turn the, the edge up so that my diamond is up and my spine that I've created with the leaf, or my single plane anyways, is down. So you start flattening it, then I'll go to the peen. get this to have a nice graceful line around there. If you need to, you can do a little bit of grinding or filing, but the better you can do right from the hammer, the quicker this will go. But I will need to take just a little bit off right through there because I did pull that corner out just a little bit too much and I don't want a corner. So I'm going to go hit that on a grinder really quick. And that's what it looks like with a little quick grinding. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a, a vein in. I'm just going to sink this vein down into a veining tool. And this is that tool. It's just a block with a very well-radiused edge on it. And to sink it down in there, I've got what is really a fuller, it's an old cold chisel, but I've rounded it off. And I've rounded the edges this way so it doesn't leave you any gouge marks. 
that's what will push this down into there. So be really careful with your fire. This thing's really thin. It'd be super easy to burn up. I just use this fuller then to push this down into the vein there. Or the crease, I should say. Maybe it's more of a creasing tool, but fairly common way to make leaves. That one came out a little crooked. Ideally, it comes out right to the point. I'm not sure if there's anything we can do to fix it at this point. Yeah, maybe. Depending on how your guillotine tool is set up, if you have one, this is something that can be done in a guillotine tool. It might be a little bit more reliable than holding it between your legs like this, but this does work. Now I'm going to put it with the crease up and just start to flatten out the edges a little bit. I don't really want them flat in the long run, but that makes it easier to come back in here and kind of roll them around this curve some. With a tiny cross pin, I'm just going to roll that end over a little bit because I think that makes it into a more graceful leaf. Mostly I'm just cleaning up what we've done previously. This will thin it out a little bit, but make sure the rounding up is nice and smooth. And we can cut this off. So there is one finished leaf. Make two more like it. And in the end, these are all going to forge weld side by side. I think I'm going to let those cool a little bit. Then I'm going to go to a piece of 5 8 round bar. I haven't tried this project before, so this might be a little heavy, but I want enough that my forge weld transitions from three of these pieces into the stem nicely and doesn't look really out of place as some big blob on the end of another bar. And then hopefully we can draw all that out and make it more graceful. And because it's such a nice heavy bar, I don't think I need to upset it to do my scarf. So I'm just going to start forging the scarf end here. The blunt paper. And try to set it over the edge of the anvil. As I do this, then I drop my left hand so that that curls up some. I do want that to come to a point though, and that's not quite pointed. You want an end that's going to blend nicely with the scarf on the mating piece. I'm going to take my three finished leaves that I went ahead and just quenched so I can get back to work on them here. And I want those to come together. So I may need to bend the leaves out of the way a little bit, at least the two outer ones, so that I can get this to clamp like that. Now we'll worry about the spacing and the orientation of the leaves for exactly what I want when we're all done. Now you can baling wire these together. Heck, you could probably even put a rivet through there if you want to to hold them until you forge weld them. I'm going to take the easy way out today and I'm just going to put a couple of little tack welds in there and that's all it needs to hold it together till we weld it. By the time we're done, there will be no sign of that tack weld, and it is not really part of the finished project. So those should stay together now, and we'll be able to get a good weld.
heat there to go ahead and finish my scarf. That's a pretty good match for the scarf on the first piece. And we'll bring this both up to welding heat. This one will go on the anvil. I'll trap it with the longer piece, get rid of those tongs, then we'll set that weld. Make sure I get those scarves. Then I can start refining the shape. Now that it's welded, I'll go to a heavier hammer. One of my main goals at this point is to put some taper in this so that it looks more natural. I'm going to probably take that down close to 3 8 square right there at that end. Just a little bit of the scarf that was sticking up there so I'm making sure it gets welded back down before I go too far. At this point, I really am just trying to get that tapered. Once I've got a nice start here, I'll probably go to the horn for this section back here. Like all the scarf joints disappeared very nicely. I don't see any sign of it. Next thing we'll do is start rounding that up and then we'll move on to the main part of that bar. There's a nice transition to where the leaves are. The leaves are kind of a tangled up mess right now, but we'll fix those when we're near the end. Now we've looked at texturing using some spring dies before 
But my anvil, this table, is really chewed up because somebody's used it as a cutting plate in the past. And that's not a bad texture, so I'm just going to forge this a little over there just to give it some more texture and make it look a little bit more organic. Not absolutely critical, but it doesn't hurt. It's hard to say how much texture that will add, but it can add quite a bit if you didn't want it. So hopefully it looks good in this project. Now I want to go ahead and start drawing this back out some more. But I got kind of a problem at this point. I just keep this piece of sheet metal up here because it blocks air current when I've got the door open. And it's nice to work with the door open. But without it, I can pass that all the way through the fire. much better. this cool a little bit so I can grab the other end. It's probably close to cool already so it won't take long and then we'll finish this last section and put a do something with this end. texture that last little bit, I'm going to put an upset in this. To do that, I'm going to start with just a little bit of a bend so I can work it against the anvil a little bit easier. That just gives me something that I can work a little bit easier. I'm going to kind of flatten it in one dimension here. I'm going to keep upsetting go back and forth a little bit. This is just sort of a little decorative detail I see in my head. This will be where we'll punch a hole to hang it from. mess with this till I get the shape I thought I saw earlier. Not that it matters, just do what you think you want to see on this end, really. That's kind of what I'm going for, though. I think for the most part, that's what I saw in my head for that shape. And I'll add that last little bit of texture. And 
advantage of having your forge table the same height as your anvil. Makes a nice work stand. Just want to go ahead and punch a hole in this. Skinny punch will cool it fairly often. It's the next day, it was getting a little bit late, and as I finished working on this finial end that we were doing and getting that all upset and the way we wanted it to look, I looked back and noticed that one of the leaves was missing on this. Now the leaf hadn't burned off, it was laying on the ground right behind me here at the anvil, and that's because as I worked on this end, the vibrations from working traveled up the end, found a weak spot in the stem of that leaf, and managed to break it off. So I went ahead and took the torch and I torch welded that back on. I cleaned up my weld. It looks good. It's not going to be a perfect thing because that's now welded back on. Like I said at the beginning of the video, some people would weld this in the first place and that's okay if that's the technology you want to use. I was just hoping not to go there. But it's going to look just fine when it's done. Probably nobody will ever notice that's there. I'll know it's there. But we're going to go ahead and move on with the project. But what's the lesson learned? Because a lot of times you can learn a lesson from something like that. Probably the lesson learned is finish this first. Do this entire shaft. Do all the texturing. Do this end here that isn't going to be a forge weld. Isn't going to be particularly weak and just leave the bar full thickness for the last few inches so you can do a scarf and catch that weld, then weld the leaves on there and finish the leaves, and you won't have to do any work to this, and there'll be a lot less vibration that might affect this end of it. So that's just a thought. That doesn't mean that's going to happen every time. There was probably a little nick, a little cold shut, something that propagated the crack as a result of those vibrations. So where do we go from here? The next step then, I'm going to roll this up. You can make a scroll out of this if you wanted, but I want it to be fairly round from this end up to oh, somewhere in here. And then the leaves are going to come down into the middle of the piece and fill in the ring that results from rolling this up. So I'm going to start at the heavy end. I'm going to use mostly bending forks to roll this up, although you could probably do it over the horn of the anvil. But you want it to be as perfectly round as you can make it. Maybe use a cone mandrel if you have one, and then with some controlled heat, we'll bring the leaves in, we'll shape the leaves and the stems to get them pointed just the way we want to make a nice pleasing piece out of it. In the long run, this should be about a 10 inch ring, I think. Now, a longer heat on this might be kind of nice just to uh, have more to work with at this stage, but. In the coal fire, you got to take what you can get. That would be one advantage to a gas forge, as long as you can get the ring as it wraps up in the door of your gas forge. And I think this one would fit in mine, but we'll finish it in the coal fire anyways. That will probably still go to the cone mandrel because I have that option to make sure it's perfectly round and to, to kind of size it before we get completely done with it. It's starting to kink a little there, so I we'll need to watch that. But this is where having a big floor mandrel really helps. If you've got a piece of pipe the right size, you can use a piece of pipe. So there will likely be just a little bit of back and forth here. And with 
the cone mandrel, I actually prefer to wrap this just a little bit tight so that I can straighten it out some with the mandrel and that seems to make a smoother circle than trying to actually bend it around the mandrel. So it's just for correcting. Trying to make things round by eye is always a good exercise. Even if you don't quite make it, you have to correct it this way. Now if you've ever seen a cone mandrel with a slot, that slot is for your tongs to go into. This one doesn't have one, so I just have to make sure they're out of the way. It looks like it's going to bend up just where I want it to. So my goal then is for this to come around and come right under here, and then we'll bend the leaves down so they fill up the inside of the circle. Now while a gas forge would get this whole thing hot and let you bend it all in one heat, the coal forge does allow for more unusually shaped items to just kind of stick out wherever it needs to. And that is one of the big advantages of the coal forge. Yeah, it's got a kink in it. So at the very least, I want them out like that. And that will keep them from being a big problem as we finish this up. By doing that, I can get this over the mandrel a little bit better. There we go. Perseverance pays off. At this point, you're not going to get it back on that mandrel to mess with the circle. And there goes that leaf again. Oh, that's really disappointing. So I will probably weld that back on yet again. I took a few minutes and I cleaned up where that leaf had broken off, got back down to bare metal, put a little bevel on it so I get a nice deep penetration weld, and welded it with a torch. I prefer to weld things like that with a torch just because I feel like I've got more control, but if you're trying to do this, whatever technique you're comfortable with. Then I just want to clean it up so it's not the big blob where the weld is. Luckily, there is very little I want to do to that part of this. I kind of like which way that leaf is pointing. Very little to do. In fact, the other leaves I don't think are going to need much. So we're going to heat this up with a torch, get that final shape, also make sure they're all in front of where this will be hanging on the wall so it doesn't make it rock against a wall if you're using it as a wall hanging. And then this project should finally be done. This is going to want to bend wherever the heat is. So just move your heat to where you need the bend to be, and it usually goes pretty easy on something like this. And I need to bring that up so I get that leaf brought forward. 
There we go. A little twisting and a little bending and a little shaping and just whatever you need to do to get this to look the way you want it to. I'm going to bring that one forward before I shape the rest of this stem. Avoid the conflict I had with the other one. I don't know that you want these to be perfectly symmetrical in the way they point. It's tempting to do it that way, but I'm going to try not to. Just try to give it a little bit more of an organic feel, I think. careful on the one I keep breaking. I'll try not to bend it right where the break has been. Although I've been able to get away with that before. There's some things that assembling with the torch is just the way I do it because it does give you a lot of versatility. And I've gotten away with bending right at the welds quite often. Not a hundred percent perhaps, but It's a good weld, you should be able to get away with it. Now I'm going to have to bend right through that weld area, make sure it's good and hot while I do that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. get in there with a wire brush and clean some of that scale off. I'm just going to set this on the fire and get it hot then I'll put wax finish on it and we ought to be done. Well here is our finished project. When I started the video I think I used the word simple. And while the design is fairly simple and the concept is fairly simple, I actually found it to be quite fiddly and it took a whole lot of paying attention to the little details to get it to come out the way I wanted. But I am quite happy with it other than the fact that it's got that little torch weld in there. Like I say, probably nobody else will know and a lot of people would have torch welded it to start with. I know a lot of blacksmiths that do excellent forgings, but they prefer to weld their stuff together some other way than forge weld. A lot of them is just pieces are too big to get in a forge because they're doing big gates and big railings. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. I just like to present things a little bit more pure to form for blacksmithing as a learning exercise here. But if what you've got is a torch or a TIG torch, and that's the way you want to assemble something like that, Use the tools, the equipment, and the skills you have, and you can still be plenty creative. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you would like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.